Simon. Welcome to the forum, Transition to the Future of Autonomous Vehicle Innovations for Thailand 4.0. My name is Pidi Chorn Klamjit. I'll be the MC for this event. So back in the 1900s, if the Henry Ford asked a customer what they want, they would have said, I want a faster horse. And when he started making cheap, reliable cars, people said, nah, what's wrong with the horse? People don't know what they want until we show it to them, Steve Jobs. Same goal for autonomous vehicle. Imagine you sit in the Bangkok traffic, and all you have to do is sit and relax and let the car drive itself. How pleasant, pleasant would that be? Mark Andreessen, a venture capitalist, once said, people are so bad at driving cars that the computer don't have to be that good to be a much better. A trend of autonomous vehicle is inevitable. Sooner or later, we will have a self-driving cars, but it doesn't only involve technical aspects. Planning, policy, and regulations will also play a bigger role. Collaboration will be the critical ingredient for the self-driving future. Today, we'll be hearing from the expert from both sides, technical and regulations, in the panel discussion sessions. We'll have an MOU signing ceremony from the eight government institutions in between the sessions. Then we'll have a wrap-up and open discussion for public at the end. So first, I would like to invite Dr. Jenkit Kanatarana, Executive Vice President, National Science and Technology Development Agency, NASDA, to give an opening remark. Please give a round of applause for him. Well, good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, speakers and local and international participants, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the Thailand Science Park and the National Science and Technology Development Agencies today. It is my true pleasure to welcome you to, do, to today's forum, uh, Transitioning to the Futures of Autonomous Vehicles, Innovation for Thailand 4.0 Forum. This event is organized as a part of uh, the 15th NASDAQ Annual Conference on next uh, 2019. As you may, you may know, the global trend in the low safety and solution to traffic problems, as Dr. Bichon mentioned earlier, is geared toward autonomous vehicle technologies or AVs. Therefore, NASDAQ and its national research centers, along with their uh, partners, in the academics and in the private sectors have initiated some specific research aspects relevant to autonomous vehicle technologies. The purpose of such technology research aspect is to understand a bigger picture of the upcoming technologies and the, disrupt and the disruption that it will cause. Today's forum, we have two panel discussion sessions, as Dr. Petition already mentioned, and in between the two sessions, we will have the MOU signing ceremonies between eight organizations, uh, four of which will be from the Ministry of Science and Technology, and the other four from the Ministry of Transport. I believe that uh, the scientific ideas and the innovation in autonomous vehicle technologies are crucial in order to prepare ourselves and Thailand for the futures of AV generations. In this aspect, I'm glad that this forum gathers many experts in the field of autonomous vehicles, lo both locals and internationals. This event will give us an uh, excellent opportunity to share our knowledge as well as our experience. And we can discuss and learn from one another as well as explore the collaborations potentials that will come uh, can come after these uh, sessions. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the speakers and, participant, uh, and participants for their contribution to today's forums. I wish this uh, event a great success and everyone uh, to have an in, in a most enjoyable time. And finally, may I officially declare this forum open. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jenkrit. Uh, next up, we will have a panel discussion on autonomous vehicle te technology trend. So 
please allow me to invite the panel panelists in, onto the stage. So the moderator will be Dr. Jatuwat Radreung Ranun, a researcher from NECTEC. <laughs> Assistant Professor Naksit Num Wong, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. <laughs> Mr. Kevin Tsai, Director, Marketing and Development, Wotron Electronics, Taiwan. Mr. Tawit Uthai Jaren Pong, Nutonomy. <laughs> Dr. Kisada Kitaya, Kitra, Kitaya Kiron, co founder and CEO of Urban Mobility Tech. And please allow me to pass the mic to the moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Petition, for your uh, invitation. I'm going to start the discussion uh, right now with uh, our panelists. So uh, here we have uh, uh, an academic person, Dr. Naksit, and also uh, experts from the, the industry. So uh, I'm just going to start with uh, introduction of our speakers. Uh, Dr. Nuxit, can you can you uh, say a few words about yourself, your background? Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, actually, I'm working in the academics, so I'm mainly focused on uh, research and teaching. Um, my background is uh, from the vehicle dynamics and control, so I'm interested in uh, ADAS, advanced railway assistance systems, and also autonomous driving system. Um, right now, we have uh, some research about uh, autonomous driving system. We uh, modify uh, ultra small electric vehicles to be uh, uh, by wide vehicle. That means we can control the vehicle by the joystick, and then we can uh, improve it into uh, autonomous driving. Right now, we are uh, going to uh, uh, develop it into uh, level three autonomous driving. And we also have uh, research about um, vehicle dynamics, uh, focusing on the uh, driver behaviors. So we have a driving simulator that I was uh, research that can uh, use for um, study about the behaviors based on many conditions, and that uh, study can be used in a uh, autonomous driving system as well, because um, in the transition period that we, we used autonomous driving vehicle together with the manual driving vehicles, uh, the fear of the autonomous driving should be um, fa familiar to uh, the, 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 the other person on the street. If the autonomous driving drive differently from the human, sometimes uh, it's not easy to drive together. So we're also interested in the behavior of the autonomous driving, uh, driving patterns and so on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Naksit. Uh, next, we have Mr. Kevin Sai from uh, Wetron Electronics. Can you say a few words about yourself? Uh, hello, good afternoon, uh, all the dear friends here and uh, the panelists here. Uh, my name is Kevin. Uh, I'm from Taiwan. I uh, live in Thailand for around 12 years. Um, my company uh, is a uh, manufacturer, uh, mainly producing the parts of uh, sensors, all kinds of sensing technology ranging from short distance, from uh, ultrasonic, visionary, and then millimeter wave radar. Uh, from 24 gigahertz to 79 gigahertz. And uh, our company play a role in the AV industry that uh, we got to protect uh, the cars from hitting the people and also predict the any um, on, uh, on certain situations that may happen uh, between the cars and the pedestrians. Uh, so our company uh, in the future, we are going to um, promote our sensing technology uh, during the promotion in the Thailand AV industry. That's, uh, I'll share some examples for you uh, during the today's panel. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Next, we have uh, Mr. Tawit. Can, can you say a few words about yourself? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Tawit Uthai uh, Jarapong. I'm working for uh, Neutronomy uh, now. Uh, I'm working for Neutronomy Asia. So my responsibility is uh, uh, so I convert off-the-shelf vehicles, which is uh, Nissan uh, Nissan Zoe, uh, into autonomous driving platform. So currently we have uh, 10, 10 such platform running in Singapore, and we are rolling uh, uh, which is currently running in, in Singapore uh, actual road. Yeah, that, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you. Let's move on to Dr. Kwitsada. Uh, can you say a few words about yourself? Uh, and do you also want to play the video? Uh, so my name is Chris Sada. Um, so I involved in autonomous vehicle during 2008 to 2012 when I did my PhD at Stanford. So at that time, um, we convert an auto, um, Audi TTS into, into an autonomous vehicle that climb up Pikes Peak. So um, it was an interesting time that time when I did autonomous vehicle. Not many people know about it, but now like fast forward 10 years, it's become like uh, one of the hot topics right now. So currently what I'm doing is um, um, me with my friends, we found a company um, called Urban Mobility Tech. And what we focus right now is a service for first mile, last mile, meaning that um, we providing um, a service for people to once they arrive at the BTS, how do they get to the final destination. And current solution that we doing is a um, fully electric um, tuk-tuk that designed for sharing. So we hope that one day in the future, so we will collaborate with one of these people, maybe many of you guys, and then you could use our platform. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for your introduction. So uh, for today, we are going to be asking questions regarding to the uh, AV technology uh, globally and also in Thailand. So. Uh, from from the beginning, I, I would like to ask Kevin about the uh, current status of AV technology because he's has a he's from the industry. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for these questions. Uh, uh, from my point of view, right now, uh, AV uh, technology, um, as you can see from the media's. Uh, from those developed countries, they try to pull in all kinds of resources uh, into the development of AV technology. And then, uh, today we got uh, some information to share with you is, um, my personal point of view is, uh, it's mature enough in terms of uh, my company's products because we are developing the sensing uh, device. The sensing devices uh, at this stage the, the ultrasonic sensors, the visionary cameras, uh, long distance and the short distance, and the millimeter weather uh, radar are something already there. Uh, you can buy a, simply a more premium cars. They are already in your car. But right now we just lack of, of another platform, uh, a software a package or a platform trying to integrate all the sensing technology together into some uh, uh, robotic uh, operating, operating way uh, to make it AV. Um, so in terms of technology, I think uh, as a manufacturer, we can do it now. So uh, for me, AV is not really something far away, but um, it really makes people confused is in what applications uh, under which occasion that people can really um, experience AV technology. So uh, after today, today's talk, I, I, I believe that all of you can really uh, understand one point is all the hardware bases that uh, AV required actually already existed in the industrial uh, um, capability. A lot of a lot of manufacturers from Taiwan, from China, actually they can do the same thing. But um, they are waiting for the regulations uh, to reach that uh, level so that we can showcasing uh, more people that uh, these things are not really difficult from several videos I bring today so that you can understand why. 
So I'm switching to the videos and you may want to say a few words about the videos. All right. Um, I think we can go through a few pages from uh, four. From four, uh, yes, because this page explains simply uh, what required uh, on uh, autonomous vehicles from uh, astrosonic sensors, visionary cameras, the millimeter wave uh, radars. So uh, it was uh, integrated together and um, provides the very overall protections from the uh, cars to uh, go wild. So we, we can sense in something and bring the information back to the computer and the computer will um, make decisions to let the car uh, continue to go in the direction or stop. Okay, so you can see this is the legacy and the roadmap of Vitron, Vitron uh, Electronics and we provide these things from 2004 until 2016 and now my company's roadmap is to combine all the things into one thing called safety package safety kits. And once the regulations of all countries, including Thailand, allow such things to happen, and we are going to utilize this technology to all the platform uh, provider, then you can uh, really imagine some years later, not very far away, the things you see on the media are so going to realize in uh, Thailand, together with the help assistant with all the uh, panelists uh, on the stage now. And uh, you can go through uh, the pages I so this is all the component that already existed. The technology is not really a difficult uh, situation and or bottleneck now. And the cameras, we can use uh, simply use camera, only two cameras and let the car uh, park by itself. Um, next one. And this is uh, a, a automatic emergency braking. I think we have a short videos. Uh, yeah, so it really utilizes in uh, AVR. Oh. And this video just simply showcasing that we already can utilize our sensors okay. that the car oh, stop it. It. when they meet up with some pedestrian or some accidentally uh, coming uh, objects. Okay, and next one. Um, this is something. Uh, Dr. Newsit very familiar with is a uh, all the way platform and uh, during these uh, projects we try to combine the the technology of other company and uh, LiDAR from Valentimes and we um, invest in some manpower to do uh, map planning and the next page is waypoint planning N the next page waypoint planning uh, okay so two two slides so that you understand that uh, how uh, this company or uh, uh, people trying to plan the route of uh, AV, AV um, cars uh, route. So uh, we simply can use these things in the future uh, environment that uh, maybe nearby your home or around the BDS. Uh, Mr. Tawit, can you add to, to that? for the current status of AV technology as a person who is working in the, the company that focuses on uh, autonomous driving. Yeah, so as, as Mr. Kevin already said, that like the, the state of the hardware right now for the, for the autonomous vehicles is, is, the, is already there. So what we are lacking is the software to make a decision whether or not the car should go ahead, should stop, or make a, make a uh, or make a turn because to us humans the, the a decision to drive a car is very simple we do it every day we do it when we drunk or half asleep so but if if I ask you to write just on the paper not on the not not a programming write on the paper how how would you reverse your car into the parking lot you, it's, it will become pages so yeah so the hard part of autonomous vehicles is the software because because the hardware side, the sensor size is already there. It needs a software, and on top of the software, we need a regulation because on the actual road, because because 
when you when you are on the road, people will not follow exactly what the rule is written. So we need to decide. We need to learn how people in in Thailand drive, because from our experience from autonomy, the way people the way people drive in Singapore is a lot different from the how people drive in Boston. So and how people drive in in Bangkok, like we all know, like we we have. A really, a really fast car. We have a motorcycle. We have a pedestrian. So it it will be a lot more challenging. But to get to get all that start, we need the right regulation to drive these autonomous vehicles on the road. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kuchada. Can you say a few words about current status of AV technology? <laughs> Uh, so, rather than talking about today, I'll show you like um, 2008, <laughs> which is like 10 years ago, what we can actually do with the autonomous vehicle. So, this was actually in 2010. So about nine years ago. Um, so this is what the technology can do nine years ago. So that was in 2010. Um, we could actually make the car drive up Pikes Peak, 12.4 um, kilometers up by itself. And um, at that time, whenever people ask us like when the AV technology is going to happen, uh, my, prof my professor always joke about it and say five years, five years from now. Every time someone asks him, he'll say five years, no matter which year people ask him. But actually, if you ask him today, um, the, the answer is actually the AV technology is, is already exists. So in the U.S., it's actually they already try out on the real road. So technology is is kind of getting there, close to commercialized. It's not yet commercialized, but very close. And so it's to me, I think right now it's getting to the point where where is the technology part still a bit challenging, but it's actually start blurring with the um, government policies, how people perceive, and other industry around it. So because like um, as um, Kun Tawit was saying, right, um, that one of the challenges make decision. And when people make decisions and you crash the car, it's the driver's fault. And that's simple, right? But if you start writing a software and the car crashed, then it's, it's become much more than technical questions in terms of um, who is responsible for, for it. And, and how do you actually set standard for the software in terms of legislation? Like, how do you write a safety standard for this kind of software? And, and who, who said it? So there's many unknown questions, right? I mean, so if I ask you, will you be acceptable if this AV car per perform like 99.99% of the time? Will you be okay with it? And that, if, if you think about 99.99%, that's, you might say, oh, that sounds good. But it's actually convert to, let's say, if you jump into the car 10,000 times, you have one accident. That's actually not quite good. And, and, and if you look at the statistics, um, there's an insurance statistics, and the people actually, even though they're not good drivers, but they actually drive a lot of kilometers before they actually have accidents. So, so to me now, it's like technology plus 
like everything around it, is become a challenge of the AV. Coming to uh, an academic standpoint, what what do we have to do in order to drive this this technology forward? What what do you think about this, Dr. Naksit? Actually, in uh, Thailand, uh, actually we have many um, person that can uh, work about AV. Yeah? For, for example, Dr. Krista, that he has very good experience. But you see that in Thailand, we don't have uh, much opportunity to do this in Thailand because of we have uh, lack of uh, budget, lack of technology and expertise. We talked about this 10 years ago or 15 years ago. It's very few opportunity to do this. But right now, because, because of some of the uh, equipments, as Kevin said, the, the price drop a lot. So right now you can see that in Thailand, we, we have a lot of research about this. Okay, not only at Chula, but other press as well. Um, because the equipment is cheaper. But what we are doing now is like proving our concept is step. Our step is far away from the global trend that they are now in the field operational test levels. That does mean um, we have to catch up more faster to, to, to meet that levels. But one of my point of view is that um, even the technology is ready, but right now we don't know exactly what's going to be in the future for the platform. Because um, you were talking about software, about um, how to de decide how to drive, uh, for example, um, one scenario, if you go to the intersection and the traffic light turn to be yellow and red, what will you do? For, for the rules, they said you have to stop at the intersection, but how you stop? One person may uh, slow down the car slowly, really slowly, but one hardly brake to stop the car. So how AV cars should do? follow the, the slowly uh, break or highly break. So, for example, in, in, in some research, they, they do learning from uh, good drivers. For example, the uh, driving school uh, uh, instructors, how they drive. Before we have AI, we had to learn from the human first. What is a good manner of driving? So, this is one of the challenging points, how to harmonize uh, AV with the, the manual driving cars on the street, because we cannot go to level five or the cars on the street. We have to go step by step, like level three mixed with manual cars, level four, level five. So transient state is very challenging. Another challenging point is about software, because there are many uh, car companies and also uh, tech companies developing AVs. They have their own software developing. It's possible that we have something like the common platform or like Google's Android or the <coughs> Apple iOS that's possible for um, other car, small car company that cannot develop all it by themselves. This is a challenging point. So as a person with a uh, uh, automotive engineering uh, background, do you work closely with the industry in terms of developing the uh, AV technology and then pass on to the industry? Do you have... But right now, um, we, we have some uh, cooperation, but actually it's in very early stage because the study cannot be used for making the product, but maybe the uh, primitive study for the company to develop the technologies. Um, yeah, I'm working with some companies now. Yeah, but the, the, product, the, the product may be far away, but we have to develop our technology first. Yes. Hi. Uh, so I, I I would like uh, I would like to show us a video of what is the what is the current technology of autonomous vehicles.
So this is uh, the actual one of the actual run. So this video I think is the four times speed. Uh, so this is what, what we call a tropical day in Singapore. In in it, in it, autonomy Asia, we're doing this every single day, like five days a week, running running the car on this road. Uh, uh, so on the road, we still have a safety driver as you see on the bottom bottom left. So, but he's not touching the wheel. His his hand is near the wheel, ready to take over for for the safety purpose. But but uh, but the whole of these videos, the driver didn't take over at all. So this is the current situation of of uh, autonomous vehicles right now. So this this is like this is the actual road on Singapore we call one north area. So the whole area is about approximately five by five uh, kilometers. It's a small. But in this area, you have all the traffic. You have actual traffic. You have pedestrian. You have an office workers. You have a traffic. You have a traffic police. You have a construction site, and our car can handle it quite well. So the car is not super smooth, but it's but at least it's uh, it's obey the traffic rules. When we when we we detect the car just now, so we we are, we plan the app, the use the real time uh, algorithm to plan the car to go around that car, and then we we stop for the traffic light and we wait for the green light, wait for the pedestrian, and so on so forth. So the company is called Active. So the 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 current focus of the company is developing the, the AV technology, right? And then what's the, the long-term plan for the company? Well, in the long-term goal of the company is the, to, make the, to make this technology, technology to be uh, the right channel. So just, just, as, just as we already have Grab today in Thailand, so one day you just call Grab and then autonomous vehicles just show up in, in front of your house. So that that's a that's an idea. So because uh, this way uh, we can because the difference between using a human uh, autonomous vehicles than the human drive chair uh, the ride sharing is that uh, with the autonomous vehicles you can we don't we don't we can run, we can utilize the car for a longer period let's say like twenty hours a day instead of just twelve or sixteen. When can we expect to see that in Bangkok? Uh, yeah. So again, so if if the government allow, we we would really would love to let's try it so it, to it, see what happens. It also has to do about with the uh, the law and regulations, right? Yeah, that that would be a pretty uh, a, a really big factor because the the whole reason of why the autonomy is running in Singapore because Singapore have a have a right policy to test the autonomous vehicles there. So you think the, the company, the Aptive, are, are they going to uh, position themselves as a, a, a disruptive technology company or are they going to compete with the conventional uh, auto industry? Uh, because I think it's, it's more on the demand and supply side. Because right now, what people need is a cheap, cheaper service. So, and with autonomous vehicles, we can provide a user with a cheaper ride-sharing service. So that that's what we are going for. Doctor Kwisada, you also you are also interested in the the uh, sharing economy of. Uh, Hey, what's up, everyone? Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Singapore. So, what what's the direction of the the, the company, the MoveMe? What, what what are you planning to achieve, and and also in the future, is it going to be uh, related to the other AV tech? Are you going to implement AV tech with the Tuk Tuk? 
um, I think how we see it is more like uh, we'll be happy to be like more like a user rather than a person who developed the technologies. But we actually see the way we operate the, the fleet service right now that we operate in specific areas. Um, we, we think we're actually a good test bed for autonomous vehicles because um, what we have here, for example, this is like in Chula Lumpur area. So we have about 10 of these tuk-tuks. Um, each tuk-tuk is actually running only in Chula area. But each car actually run about 120 kilometers per day. So you have a super focused um, area that you actually collect all the data with, with intense information. And, and that to me felt like a, a very good start, starting point for um, autonomous um, vehicle technologies. So um, for us, it's, it's more like um, we are looking in the, in the futures that um, if any of, any of universities or like a, uh, public sectors or companies happy to um, try on our test bed, we'll, we'll be more than happy to, to try it out. So that's how we see it, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, I would like to get back to Kevin because he's, he's from the industry and to, in order to uh, deploy all the AV technology, we, we need sensors, we need uh, parts that we can fit with the conventional cars. So that's the essentials that would, that are the things that would allow the eventual picture of the implementation of AV in the real world. So uh, maybe you can add on that, Kevin. Um, excuse me. Uh to emphasize in which part? Sorry. The uh, the auto industry auto in industry. terms of uh, uh, AV technology that you can uh, provide the uh, the sensors and the parts that would help achieve the uh, auto AV driving of the passenger vehicles. Um, right. Um, with what kind of technology to make AV uh, realize in your daily life? Uh, I think we go through for several uh, uh, people's remarks. Um, but every day, what comes to my mind is uh, what are we going to use AV to make our society better, to make our life feel better? Uh, I think this is a common uh, question. People need to. Uh, join the talks uh, from the public uh, to the uh, government officials. Um, I think I will not put uh, other words uh, in technology, but I want to uh, really go to a very uh, simple question. This is, for example, our daily life, have you ever imagined or you calculate in your notebook how much time you ever spend on your uh, 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 commuting? and on the traffic. And um, if I said, with the uh, efforts from the people here, can help you reduce half of the commuting time, uh, would you like to believe it? Um, if you don't believe before you come to this forum, uh, I guarantee you can say, uh, you can feel much more comfortable. Uh, the answer will be yes. Uh, we share the same common ground. Uh, for the bus, I believe uh, the ultimate goal of AV is actually part of uh, traffic transportation transformation. It's under the big scope of how people are going to move from point A to point B with a better cost saving choice and a more energy uh, efficient uh, way. And um, we, need, we need to use the public opinion. Uh, to drive our uh, government sites, really provide some playgrounds. We say playgrounds as the playground in Singapore, and the playground also, uh, Taiwanese government also uh, provides a lot of playgrounds for the private sectors like us, the research institutions uh, in Taiwan. Yet we can do some things and show to the media, and through the media, go to the public. So now in Taiwan, you, you ask something about public, uh, so ask something about uh, autonomous vehicle. Uh, I, I believe more and more people can share their point of view. But at least two years ago, I think people are feel they are really indifferent 
with this topic. Okay, so now the thing we not need to drive, the things forward, is not really force the government to do something for these things, but uh, to raise up the attention from the public and um, um, allow such kind of panel to happen uh, regularly. So that's explained to them uh, uh, time after time that uh, AV technology actually will not be less safe, will not be, uh, will, will be not uh, cost consum uh, consuming a better choice for their daily life. So once everybody starts to believe these things, the rest of the thing will back to uh, the company like us, will guarantee to make it safe without hitting people uh, accidentally, uh, we got some uh, proof preventions. Yeah, you get the technology in your company, and uh, with uh, my com uh, my company provide a certain uh, secured component component to make uh, these things realize. And we need to responsible for uh, the government because the government will promise the people with a better future, better life, uh, based on our commitment. Yeah, that's uh, I really want to emphasize today. So back to Mr. Tawit, you show a very impressive video of uh, AV cars driving around in the city. So uh, let's just imagine this picture doing that thing, that particularly same thing on the streets of Bangkok. What, what, what do we need in order to get that to happen? From, from maybe the government side, regulation, rules and laws? Uh, I think the, the first thing that we need, uh, the, the first thing that we need to do to achieve that is, is the test bait. So like, uh, just, just like Move Me did, I think the, first, the, first, the right first step would be give us a close, a, a close area to test on, whether it's, it's going to be a university area or maybe this area, like the, the science center, the science park, or or industrial in, uh, the in, industrial estate. So wh wherever that is, like you have less traffic, you have well-defined road. That that would be good. That would be good enough. That that would be the, the first step that we need. So, Dr. Quetzada, you have an experience dealing with the, the laws and regulations in terms of uh, pushing your project forward. Do you have anything to share with us in terms of uh, driving the AV tech in order to achieve what we have in mind? Well, I think it's probably similar to what other speakers were saying that um, we probably need um, some kind of like a sandbox where where you just draw a line that, okay, in this area, let's say we're going to bring in like AV technologies and let's loosen the, the, the laws a little bit because um, there will be some laws that actually prevent something like AV to happen. Like a simple thing, for example, um, I remember in the US, they actually, there was a law that saying that the steering wheels need to connect to the, to the, to the steering system, right? But um, when you do the AV, sometimes you could actually remove this and redesign the whole thing. So, so things like this will be just to say like, okay, in this area, we'll relax this law a little bit and, and it will be more like a controlled environment and, and try it out and see what happened. So I, I would say that would be a, a, a way forward that to, to make this kind of things happen. And, and uh, to, to add on to that, so on top of like maybe relaxing the regulation, so the gov but, but, but the government still rest assured that like before, before, because what we do is before we put the car on the road, we need to pass the, the road safety test first. So whatever we, we modify the car, because the government know that we need to modify the car, but to make sure that the car is still safe, we need to go to the, the, the same way that we test the, for the driving license to make sure that the car can do emergency stops, emergency stop, we can do uh, emergency takeover. We always do the right signal before, before we turn, for, uh, et cetera. Yeah. So Dr. Naksit, I believe that uh, right now Chulalongkorn University is doing the experimentation, doing the sandbox as in the other speaker was speaking. So when we do this 
experiments or testing in this sandbox environment, are 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 we are we going to make it hundred percent ready and then sell it to the industry? What what are your thoughts on this? Um, actually, we have to test a lot before we can guarantee that it's ready for the production for the industry. Uh, for example, in Inchula Longkorn University right now, we have the uh, project with uh, MBTC uh, in Thai that uh, will be a test bed for 5Gs. And we have uh, the project that to test the autonomous driving with 5G in Inchula Longkorn University. So we turn our campus to be the small sandbox. And it's very challenging for one year ahead from now that I have to make it happen. And there are many uh, steps forward that I have to <laughs> move on. For example, um, we have to, to, to make sure that our car is safe enough to test. So actually I have to start with uh, testing very close area first. But the 5G cell site is only in July and Gone campus. So I have to find some place that safe enough in July and Gone University campus, like in the parking lot to test my car first. And then after I test me, everything is okay, so I move on to the next step that is in the campus uh, road, but maybe at night that we feel cars use that road. Actually, nowadays I also test uh, in, the, in the campus road at night that no cars come. So, so we have to test step by step before we can test it in, in, in the very public condition on the road because even you have one accident happens, it can damage everything you, you make for years because people will not believe that this energy is safe or do not believe in your work anymore. So it's very challenging to, to make it happen in very safe and secure step forward. Okay. So the step would be to uh, start doing testing in the control environment and then and then move on to the next step and so on and so forth right so uh, now now we have that kind of a procedure that we know that we have to go through in order to achieve our our, our goal so I, I I want to ask you what what would be the the I mean your your vision in terms of uh, AV related to Thailand as a whole. What would be your uh, vision in terms of this technology? Okay, yeah. actually, um, on uh, February, February this, this year, uh, we I, I cooperate with uh, Thai Top Institute to uh, arrange uh, the focus group on the technology foresight for Thai automotive industry. And we have talked a lot about uh, the technologies in the futures, including with uh, C connected, A autonomous, and S shared services. We see that these three uh, trends are all uh, connected together. Because um, for technology size, right now you can see that many companies um, build a lot of technology based on standalone vehicles, but some based on car plus infrastructures. So this means car talk to uh, infrastructure sensors along the road side. So actually in the future, we don't know exactly yet that which way would be the best way or will be mix up between some way, some companies will use the standalone technologies, some companies use uh, standalone plus infrastructure communication like 5Gs. So connected will be very important things. And S, as uh, Star said that, yeah, AV can be used as an application to the sharing and ride, ride sharing. So in the future, we, we have some uh, vision that Thailand, right now you can see that the ride sharing is increasing a lot in a few years, uh, two years ago, it's increased a lot. So we, we see that the uh, number of sharing vehicles will be increasing. But for the AV to be able to uh, use in the public road, we need many hacks to, to, to carry out, like, like uh, Kevin or uh, others said. We have to uh, set up the law and regulation. Um, but if we um, 
think that the if even the, the government think that okay we have to to go for autonomous and we work on the regulations it's not still easy because there are many stakeholders that involved in this work for example um insurance companies how how can we uh, calculate for the annual fee for the uh insurance or even the uh, laws if accident happens who will be the person in charge okay so this this has to be done but for the trend in thailand we, we see that av technology can be implemented but we separate the car into two groups the private cars and the public cars we see that public car has more chance for implementing with avs than the private car because of the cost of technology is still high so the people cannot use the AV car easily if they have to buy one for using in the family, but if we use the service instead of buying the car, the AV can come to the society easier. But for the private vehicles, it can be implemented in uh, very high-end vehicles, luxury one that cost very high, so we add up with AV cost, it's not no problem for the buyers. <laughs> so, so we see that they are dual track yeah, for private car go to the luxury high end for the normal people to use is come with services and we think that in five years we should see some av on thai street but maybe in limited uh, areas not in all street in some condition okay. dr kuchada how about yourself as a person who already has a service running in Thailand. What, what would be your vision in terms of uh, AV tech that is related to maybe could be your, your second service or something? Um, so how, how I see the, the autonomous vehicle will impact um, like a fleet service business is that, um, well, the, the goal of the AV, in my view, is that um, they'll drive the cost of the, the driver cost down, right? So for us, it's actually will have good, great impact on our business if we could actually reduce the driver cost down. So that's kind of like something that we are, we are kind of like look into and, and waiting for the day where the technologies reach maturity that it could be safely implemented and the cost is right. Or I mean, even if the cost is more, we'll we'll be happy to to kind of like try it out, and and I think to to make this happen is is just coming back to the sandbox in the sense that um to start this is probably need sandbox sandbox area where you draw it, and not not because as many say not to relax the safety, but to look at the regulations in terms of what are the correct roadblock and how could we. Um, change this regulation quickly because like, if you want to change the law, it, it will take a long time before that could happen. But if we say it in this area, we'll, we'll play in, in under certain rules that everyone's agree, but this can be adjusted quickly. And I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone will learn it, including the government and policy sectors, industry, and we could bring in everyone that involved. And I think it's related to when you bring in new technologies that impact so many players, then you need this kind of sandbox to, to make it happen quickly. Mr. Tawit, do you have anything to share in terms of the vision? Yeah, uh, yeah so I totally, totally agree that the te technology is still expensive, so it's the, it makes the most sense if we have it as a public transport uh, system, maybe like autonomous minibus or something. So, because as, as we see in the market today, like the company like a uh, Waymo or Uber, they are aiming to make autonomous vehicles as a as a ride sharing. So we are they are not meant to sell sell the technology as the private as a private use. So yeah, I think that's the right right way to go. So Kevin, it seems that we are ready. How are you going to help us accommodate getting the technology going? Um, okay, I, before I go to your, uh, your questions, I, I want to re-emphasize uh, uh, three of us, uh, four of us. Um, you have to imagine how AV is going to uh, have any influence on your daily life. I have very simple examples. 
Uh, I love uh, uh, go shopping with my family in uh, nearby my neighborhood. There is a shopping mall called Mega Mega Bangna. We go there every week. Uh, the the time we spend on uh, on the traffic is from my neighborhood, uh, Namuban. Uh, we go to the main road, Bangladra. It takes about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, uh, just three kilometers long. And next step is go to Bangladesh, then we enter the Mega Bangna, and we spend around 15 to 20 minutes to look for the parking space. It's uh, unreasonable for me why I should spend so much time on uh, traffic. And if we turn uh, the AV car into uh, this occasion, um, why not we let people Put the car at your home, and from your home uh, to in front of uh, the public roads, there are very simple uh, form of AV, uh, which can be a golf cart, which can be a very minibus uh, that people can hop on, just scan uh, through the barcode on your uh, mobile phone, and can bring you to the main roads. And I change to another form of tra uh, transportation, which is a bigger size of a bus. Maybe run by makeup on a, I don't care, but uh, at least some people are operating on it. And then I can hop on another section of the AV car. And then I can really uh, get to makeup on a efficiently and spend the rest of my afternoon on shopping, uh, dining, and uh, running around in, the shop, uh, in, in that mall. Uh, if you follow my words, uh, this thing is actually not really tough to make it happen, uh, let's say if we can regulate, if we can regulate um, some uh, dedicate uh, time sections, for example, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., these time sections allowed AV cars to run the operations, and then during these sessions, there are specific two lanes from point A to point B. Don't drive your personal car to these lands, because these two lands are uh, dedicated to AV cars, okay? And then, well, all of a sudden, uh, all the things sh uh, seems easy to happen. And, of course, when you regulate all the things, you set the most of these things, you have to let uh, uh, government have enough evidence which is come from our commitment, the private sector commitment, and uh, all, all, all the, the people's uh, efforts to guarantee these things is really secure. Or maybe we go together to uh, convince the makeup on the shopping mall, the, their uh, management, say, I can provide you a very efficient and a secure way to bring your customer from point A to Z to your shopping mall, and they can spend more time on shopping, not staking themselves in, on the roads. I believe all the shopping malls, uh, the, the uh, owner were very uh, eager and feel uh, happy to hear such kind of solutions. Okay, so this case is just only uh, one of a million cases that uh, one, uh, all the people here to believe that um, in a such congested city of um, like Bangkok, we should not only believe it will happen, we hope and we should make it happen as soon as possible to make everybody's life get better. And uh, technology is uh, surely there. Um, my company at this moment, we already um, started to do the projects for uh, some specific car makers, a uh, uh, Japanese brand. Uh, that project is a simple project called uh, aut um, Automatic Emergency Brake. So this technology utilizes the sensor, a composition of 12 sensors and then uh, a cameras. So we should guarantee through the regulations of a car company, we are requested to pass a regulation called ISO 26262 through these regulations, the car uh, manufacturers like us will pass certain criteria and scenario to guarantee our sensor will not make mistake during uh, the operations. Okay, so I think they have very strict standard on this one. Okay, when um, 
this car, this kind of product can utilize in a commercial car. Of course, definitely no problems on the public transportation scenario, right? I, I can feel confident on, on this one. Okay, so I think um, right now uh, we need some playground and some lively, lively cases with certain level of business, uh, profit generating business uh, models to that people who really owns the right to say yes or no to utilize, utilize our technology. Yeah. Thank you. I guess this is uh, time to wrap up now. Anyone want to add maybe a final remark to the discussion? Can I show one of the uh, videos sure, that I bring sure, today, sure. Uh, which is the sandbox uh, testing ground that, um, uh, this one, this one, okay, yeah, this one is the testing ground. Uh, my company uh, ran the places uh, nearby our headquarters in Taiwan, um, we test by ourselves. Right, uh, it's a simple uh, closed area, then we already do the mapping. Uh, as I explained, that's a very simple form of vehicle. Imagine this kind of uh, vehicle can show up in front of you every day of your life, and all this kind of car coming in front of you, that um, if you don't want to travel far, then I think you rather choose this kind of uh, public transportations other than drive your car around. So we test it, and uh, you can see it's a very uh, relaxed that only show internally. So people will uh, like to play with the uh, AV cars, jump in the land, uh, jump in the route that we plan. Okay, then it caused no accident. See that some naughty guys like to jump, and then always uh, try to interrupt the AV operations. The people you see here is all my company em employees. So we, we play these this things, uh, we record the things just only to show the government side that we can do it in a very simple uh, occasions, okay. So it was videos just this year, uh, not long before, and another uh, videos. I guess we don't have time now. So uh, thank you all the speakers. It has been quite an eye-opening and also very interesting to hear from all the experts from the field. So I would like to also thank the audience for your attention at the at this session. The, the next would be the uh, preparing for the MOU signing ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you all the panelists. Uh, before the MOU signing ceremony, we're gonna have a refreshment break uh, right in front or behind you. Um, and then we'll come back in 15 minutes. Please be back here in 15 minutes, thank you.